glad you talked about the issue of brutalizing the traders. Um, it's important that we call government to order. Let, let's not treat these traders like they are terrorists. In the past, we've had issues with KCCA, the way it interfaces with traders with a very totalitarian hand. It's, it's not acceptable. Yeah, you have a duty, that's important. The traders have got a duty, but they are still citizens. Let's treat them as such. When we meet out a lot of violence against them, th then there gets to be a pushback, which is unnecessary. And I'm glad you addressed that matter. Right Honorable, as I did inform you last week, traders came to interact with myself and a couple of uh, members of parliament, and they had critical concerns. And um, I want to appreciate the minister. Not many people have appreciated you for your statement. I want to appreciate you because for such as you took time to meet the traders, they have been looking for you people in vain. I'm glad that meeting did happen. Never mind that you're not agreeing. At least there's a start and hopefully you'll have several engagements so that you get to a meeting of minds because that has not yet happened as far as the traders are concerned. One of the concerns the traders did have was the question of service delivery and they put it to us and have colleagues who I was with and they were saying for starters we pay heavy taxes but there is poor service delivery they told us when they go to hospital there's no medicine when they're sick they've got to go to private hospitals their children they take them to private schools the roads on which their trucks operate to supply commodities and then they have to keep going to the garages because the roads are terrible and so the traders are saying wait a minute can we have value for this tax money? And that's not a clarion call for just the traders. But the people of Uganda generally, they're saying they want to pay taxes. But let there be value for this tax money. Two, again raised by these traders, they told us they are bothered when they see how their tax money is used or misused. And they told us if we can be serious about fighting corruption, there will be a lot more money available for service delivery that way we will not be pressing them so hard right honorable speaker the inspectorate of government which reports to this house produced a report which said on an annual basis we lose over 10 trillion shillings to corruption that's a lot of money think about what it can do and so the traders and the people of uganda are saying there should be value for this tax money and that's why they are struggling are saying but wait a minute this money we pay there's no service delivery it is stolen and so there is a real struggle and that's why you struggle to engage with them because of these issues tax waivers you see any jurisdiction has got to have a modus operandi for tax waivers we need to clarify that for ourselves here there's a proposal which is before the finance committee by the ministry of finance there are particular businesses which they are seeking to waive taxes for and some of the reasons being given are ill health of the proprietors of these businesses to indebtedness of the businesses the traders are asking who is not indebted those traders they go to banks they get loans and that's why they're up in arms their businesses are crumbling just like many other ugandans and so again i would like to reiterate what colleagues are saying can we have that list so that we know who is qualifying and the proper modus operandi because if you're saying this business is heavily indebted let's salvage it there are several other businesses that are heavily indebted how are we extending help to them the other concern that the traders do have which has been mentioned here foreign investors we do need foreign investors as a country and we should be able to welcome them but you see, as we are welcoming them, we are granting them tax holidays. We give them free land. Of late, we are even guaranteeing them money. So all of these incentives, they get. But then they are engaging in retail trade. So traders are saying, wait a minute. These guys have already been cushioned with all these incentives. Why are they now playing in the same league with us? It's a problem which government needs to address. We need the investors. We have availed some incentives to them. But can they play in their league? Because you cannot come from your league based on the incentives we've given you. And now you're engaging in retail. Scrambling for the same pennies as the traders. It's not acceptable. 
Finally, right honorable speaker and colleagues, EFRIS, Electronic Fiscal Receipting and Invoicing Solutions. I, I don't want us to attempt to do a census here, but even colleagues here have had some anyway. Yesterday, one of them was saying, I need to understand this thing. So when I explain it to my voters, even here it's a challenge. The traders are saying it is convoluted for them. And that's why they see it as double taxation, triple taxation. What is so hard about government suspending this EFRIS? Because you've given time, two weeks. And I don't think two weeks is going to be adequate time. But that's what you're proposing. What's hard about suspending it? Putting it on hold for even a month. There's nothing you lose as government. So that you do engage properly with the traders, hear out their concerns, and then we find a modus operandi that works. Because you're saying in your statement, you agreed with them, but they are still on strike. Not just here, downtown Kampala, across the country. So what did you agree with them about? Government. We can put efforts to a hold engage with the traders, come to a meeting of minds, come to a common ground, even on the modus operandi, because they're finding this modus operandi problematic. And that's why they're up in arms. They're not saying we don't want to pay taxes, but they're saying, listen to us. But are we listening? Thank you, Reverend Speaker. Uh, Patrick? Uh, 